If you're currently a Rapid Weaver Classic and Stacks user, this video is for you. It's going to show you how some of the terminology transfers over to Elements and should help you feel a little bit more confident in migrating your Rapid Weaver Classic site over to Elements. Now we're just going to touch on some of the key differences to get you up and running. So right now I've got a classic project here and I've just got one stacks page and you can see it's a very typical project. I have my stacks here, the editor here, and then over on the far right hand side, we've got the inspector. And if I want to preview this site, I click the preview button. So this is all standard stuff you should be familiar with. Now let's create a blank project in Elements and see the differences. Okay, I'm going to go over to Elements and we're going to create a new project. And it gives me the project chooser where I can choose some of these pre-built free templates. But we're going to start with an empty project. And straight away, you'll notice it looks quite similar. So right away, we've got our pages and it's already added a single page to the project. And I can hit return and rename this. Now, we've got the editor here and we've got our inspector here. But right now, you can't see any components. Components are essentially our version of uh, what you might call stacks. So the stacks are here and you can drag them straight into your project. And in Elements, we have those on a tab in here. So if I hit this button, you can see all the components appear. And these are all built into Elements and ready for you to use. And to use them, you just drag them across, pop them in the page like that. Now, the difference here is we have no preview mode because Elements is WYSIWYG. So what you see here is what you'll get. So if I preview this in the browser, it's exactly the same as what I can see in the editor here. And this is a big difference, whereas in the classic world, you kind of in edit mode and then you have to click over to preview. So there's a major difference there. That's one of the things you need to get used to, but it is a much nicer way of working. Now, at the moment, you have to flip back between all these different tabs to see the items. But in Elements, there is a customizable workspace. You can move these palettes anywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag out these components and I'm just going to pop them here. And this makes the environment feel a lot more like what I'm used to in Classic. And you can resize this. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see all our web design at 100%. You'll notice this number down here scales and this is scaling my site. So if I'm on a small screen, I can actually see it entirely. Um, so there we go. So now my setup is looking very similar to what I had before in Classic. I've got my pages, I've got my stacks, I've got my editing area, and then I've got all my settings here. And this is very similar. Um, these are the component settings. So when I add something to the page, if I scroll down here and we'll add a container, you can see this changes and allows me to edit the settings for this item. So again, if I click on the text, it gives me the settings for that component. And remember, components are just like stacks. So when you drag it in, you can highlight the object and then you can edit the contents. Now, the components in Elements are very advanced and allow you to do a lot of things with them. They're really, really flexible. And with the components we've built in, you can build almost anything. And if you're just coming from Classic, it might feel a little bit overwhelming not knowing where to start. So what we've done, I'm going to delete those. What we've done, we have a feature called Templates, and that is available here. So if I click this tab, you can see I've got these core templates built in, and they're broken down into sections like we have a menu, hero, sections, media, social, forms and footers and we can quickly start to build up a site like this. So let's open the menu one because we know we want a menu. So I'm going to drag in a sticky menu and boom, there it is. And again, I can select this and edit all the settings in there. I have an SVG here for the logo and I could swap that for an image. I've got my names of my pages being printed out. If I go back to my pages menu and let's add another one so we can see this get added to the menu bar. Now you'll notice when I flick onto the contact page, there is no menu on here and we'll fix that in a moment. So we go back to our home page, and now you can see I've got these two items. I've also got a button on the end here, which I can double click into and edit and I could make that go to the store. Um, if I don't want a button there, I can just delete it 
like this. And we've got a drop zone that we can drop anything into. So if I wanted an image up here, I could drop that in there. We'd obviously need to resize it, which I can do with the controls down here. But for now, let's just delete this as we've got a nice clean menu. So we would like this to appear on the contact page as well. And the easiest way to do this is to convert it into a global. Now, these are similar to partials in Stacks that you may be familiar with. You convert things into a partial by hitting this button here in Stacks, and that will allow it to be used on multiple pages and be updated. Now, this pops you into another mode here and you make your changes and then have to click back. And now this is a partial and is available in here. Um, so if I just go ahead and create another Stacks page, I can drag this partial onto my page. And now this is some shared content between the two pages. Now in Elements, we call these globals. And to create a global, or as you know it as a partial, we can right click and say Convert to Global. And you'll notice it turns green. And this is to show you that it's being converted into a global. And this is shared content. It also appears in your components list under globals. So now my sticky menu is here. And if I go to the contact page, what I can do, I can drop this on. And now I've got a home page and a contact page. And you can see the menu item highlighting there when I swap between the pages. So this is how we would go ahead and start building out our site. I could add another page and we'll call this About Us. And again, we'll drop on the sticky menu and you can see this is really starting to take shape. So let's go and preview this in the browser and you'll see this looks exactly the same. We have a drop zone in the editor just to show you where you can put extra content. But apart from that, this looks exactly the same and any changes we make in here will be uh, exactly the same in the browser. So designing like this stops you having to edit and then preview to see how your site is looking. So this is a lot faster and more direct way of working. So one of the other things I want to highlight is the fact that Classic uses themes, which you can pick from here, but Elements is a lot more flexible. And that's why we've added a menu here to allow you to build up your own site style. So it's really powerful. Um, Whereas in Classic, we're kind of stuck with this header and footer, and there's not too many options to change it. In Elements, we have complete and total freedom to, to do what we want to do. So I'm going to go back to my templates, and I'm going to add a pre-built hero section. Now, I could build up a hero section from these built-in components. I could add a container and add a background image and some text, but these are quite good starters and I would recommend if you're coming from Classic to have a look in here and see what you can uh, use. So I'm going to add a hero photo and boom, just like that, we've got a nice bold header. And I'm going to look in the sections area and maybe we want a two column section. So I'm going to drop that in there and boom, just like that, we've got a two column section. And let's have a look in the footer. And what I'm going to do, uh, maybe we want a big footer, so let's pop that in. And now let's go and preview this in the browser. You can see in a matter of seconds, we've built up a whole page. I just need to customize the content. And as I scroll down here, you can see it's a really nicely designed page, all ready to go. Let me refresh that. Even the header here has some animation on it when it reloads, looking really good. And it's really simple to customize this. I can just double click and edit it. And if I wanted to change the color of the text, I can highlight it. Uh, we can set a color and I could do that. And I can pick from these pre-built in colors or I can go to the theme studio and create my own color palettes. And these are shared throughout the site. So this is really easy to do and I can customize this, drop in a different background image but now this is looking pretty good. And I wanted to show you one other powerful feature of the globals because they're not just for shared content. This hero photo, I would like it to appear on all my pages. That's great. So what I can do, I can right click and I can say convert to global. And now we can go ahead and find it in here, hero photo, it's underneath our globals. And on each page, I can drag this in. Now, 
this is great, but the content is the same and I don't want the content to be the same on every page. I want to customize the background image and the text. But if I change the text like this, it's going to change on every page. So you can see as I click through here, it's the same. And that's not what I wanted. I want to make it custom on each page. So what I can do, I can highlight this text and I can use a global override. So in here, I'm going to tick that. And in this text box, I'm going to write some of the text that I want. So I'm going to say, welcome to my new site. So, and this is custom to the home page. So now when I go to about us and contact, you can see it's using different text. So, and I'd like to do the same on the contact page. So I'm going to override this and say contact us. And I could do the same on the subtext as well. So I've overridden that. Fill in the form below. And it's very easy to, I notice we haven't got a form here, but it's very easy to add a form. I'm going to go back to my templates and I'm going to go to the form and we'll just add a contact us section. And I'm going to drop that in here. Boom, now I have a contact form and perhaps we don't need this other section there. So I'll delete that. Now let's go back over here and you can see our site is really starting to take shape. Let's go and preview this in the browser. So now I've got my menu. I've got some menu items that are all linked to my page. So I can click about us and it goes to the about page contact and we're on the contact page. Let me just hop back over here and I'm going to show you how to change the background image. Let's just change this to about us and on the background image, I'm going to go to background and we want to break the link to the global to make this one customized. And that's what these little link icons mean here. So let's break the link. And that means I can drop in another photo here. I'm going to go to my resources. And this is not something we've touched on yet. In classic, your resources are stored in this external window. Right now, I've got no resources in this project. Or if you're using a Stacks page, Stacks manages those resources and they're um, unique to the page, to each Stacks page. So, but in Elements, it's all integrated. So let's go back over here and I click this little folder and this shows me the resources that are used in my project. I can right click, create folders, organize them, add remote resources, etc. It's very powerful. But in Elements, we also include a core set of templates and a core set of resources. And these are handy resources you might want to use in your project. So um, I've got some here which are perfect for backgrounds. I'm going to drop that one in there. That's quite nice. And let's go to another page. Let's go to the home page and customize this one. So again, I'm going to click the hero header. I'm going to overwrite that. And maybe let's use a sky on here. Let's go for that one. Nice. So now um, if we go and preview this in the browser, you can see welcome to my new site about us contact. And just like that, we've built a custom site and this is really powerful and really fast. Once you understand how Elements works, it is super quick to build out these sites and pages and you can create sub menus. It's really, really powerful, way beyond anything that Classic could do. Now to change the style of your overall of your site, you can use a theme studio, which is up here. And this gives you some themes which are change the the curvature of things, the fonts and the general colors. So if I click through these, let me move this down here. You will see that the fonts and the background colors are changing uh, based on the theme. So it's giving you kind of different tints and you can make things look quite different. You can see the button changing there, the curvature of it. So I'm going to leave that on system, but with these themes, you can override everything. You can find everything is in a unified place here. So you don't design um, colors and fonts too much in here. You kind of want to do it via the theme because then it will change across your entire site. So you can set page colors. You can create custom palettes in here, set font families, including Google fonts, change the font size, 
spacing of things. It's really powerful. Generate shadows and customize those. Typography, border radius, lots of things in there. Really, really powerful. And whenever you set those options, they're always available in the inspector when you edit these items. So for example, the color here, these are all the colors from the theme studio. So if we go and create a custom color palette, and let's pick a color here, you'll notice that it's generating all these different shades. And if you don't want that, you can turn it on to completely custom and then make a whole custom palette for yourself, which I'm doing here, you know, with all the max built in sliders. So this could be our custom color. Um, we'll just call this custom. And if I close this down now, when I select my text and go to color and the drop down, you can see we've got our custom colors in there. And if I pick that, it's using all the colors we set up. So this is really handy and a nice way to set this up because this will be available on all our pages. So if I go to about us, then I could select the text I want and you can see I've got those custom color palettes. So if we made this uh, green and let's just uh, drop in, oh, let's drop in another template so that we can customize a few bits. Um, let's do a brand call out. So on this background color, let's change this and I'm gonna change it to my custom palette and I'll make it green. Now, if I change this, Here's our theme studio. And if I change this in here, it will change across our entire site. Everything that's using that color will change. So this is really powerful. You know, you might be building a site and you blue might be your favorite color that day. And later on, you've built out the site and you kind of come back to the design and think, actually, I'm not really loving this. I want to move it to a greeny color. And this makes it super powerful and super easy to customize that across your entire site. So it's things like this that make elements above and beyond anything Classic could do and a really great way to work. There's also light and dark mode for your website. So you can customize the color in each version. You can also set how things look on different breakpoints. So if you want things to look different on mobile, you can do that. You can just change the settings and move up through these breakpoints and customize it. Really powerful. There's so much to learn in Elements and, and so much you can do with it that I can't possibly cover it all in this video. But hopefully that has given you an idea of how Classic and Elements, while they're similar, they are quite different. But they're not so different in the fact you couldn't quite quickly get used to this. A couple of days of using elements and I think you'll feel right at home. So remember this is stacks here and these are our pages and we've got our editor. And really once you've moved this out, you'll start feeling very much at home. And what I do recommend is you use the templates to get started with because this will allow you to build up sites like this really quickly and have a play around. You should also look at the free templates. That's a great way to get started. Um, and, and a more advanced feature, when you wanna see how these things are all laid out and you wanna see how they're built, you can look at the Node browser and the Node browser lists all the relevant items on the page. So if I click the SVG here, you can see it highlights in the page. And maybe you're wondering where the brand call out is and I click that and the editor scrolls to it and shows it there. So lots to play around with and you can drag these things around in here and drag new items into this um, or from here into the, into the editor. It's really, really flexible and powerful. Hopefully this video has been useful and it's given you a bit more of an idea how Classic and Elements are quite similar, but Elements is just a new way of working and it'll take you a little while to get up to speed but it's well worth it and that's the feedback we've had from users so if you've got any more questions about the migration do let us know and we can do some more videos on specific areas to help you guys out with migration from classic to elements all right thanks for watching this one and i will see you again soon cheers bye